Money, money, money. Morning, LPI. We had returned, Brendan, uh, to one of, if not our most fantastical series of the night. It's going to be Beyond Taking On Hero. Uh, like I said before, we uh, headed to that last break for the second time today earlier in GSL. Uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to watch those matches, definitely go back and watch them. Mm. Uh, but just in case, to update you, uh, it was a very close 2-1 series uh, that Bion did wind up coming out on top of. Yep, so. got first in the group, Group H. The one that uh, Special slash Major slash all of his other names did unfortunately fall out of as Hero. Yeah. Uh, did take second there in that final matchup, so... The two guys that are in SSL Challenge make it to the GSL round of 16. That's so weird, Rapid. They're pretty good, man. I swear I wasn't wrong when I said this was the best tournament in, of, of StarCraft II in Korea. That's why I'm so excited for these uh, fast lane matches, to really see you know who are the well, better players. When you, can, when you actually consider, you've been watching Premiere, right? I have. I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been out there. Some of those matches are going to be like, it's going to be like a live versus hero. You know, it's going to be the, the repeat of the Super Tournament. There are going to yeah. be some pretty sick matches. Beyond could be in, in those matches. TY, too, up against guys like perhaps Patience, even Dark. Yeah. You know, they're going to be very, very close. Guys like SOS and Zest, they're always, already down to uh, challenge. So I actually like the format because that would actually just be like stops right. where it's like hero versus yeah. Zest. Oh, man, it's a it's a 2-0 victory in record-breaking time. But... Uh, All right, well, speaking of breaking do like records, the uh, this guy has done quite a bit of that. Uh, you can see he won his match very narrowly against Classic uh, last week, and now he's coming back again to hopefully have another victory against another Protoss opponent. Uh, he's going to be going up against Hero, and earlier on today, Bion just looked uh, incredibly on fire. I mean, this guy, I've had a lot of doubts about him lately, has not been up to his GSL championship level form, but now he is back, and... Uh, Ready to rename himself to XX Reaper God 69. Yeah. He is so good. And of course, this guy, very well, very good as well. Did I get my pronouns correct? He's my... doing very well, too. He's not sick. <laughs> well, I mean, he is sick. Well, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it fell apart before and my thus, eyes. Our language is broken down. But, uh, uh, so, you, you know, this is going to be a fantastic series, especially because we saw the best of three earlier on. And now we're going to get to see a best of five from these two. And it was very, very close. I, I feel like any of those games that these guys played could have gone either way in the best of three that they that they played uh, earlier on in GSL. So what you're saying is that anything can happen, Brendan. Well, not quite. I, I think I would still favor Hero in this one. Really? Yeah. See, when I was looking at our online community predictions, uh, I uh, saw quite a bit of favor towards Hero saying maybe 3-1 in this matchup. I think beyond has got some new fire in his uh, heart, belly. Where, where does the fire go? I don't know. Who makes up these analogies? Not me, know. that's for sure. If I you did... can see the fire in his eyes. Ooh. There's a lot of different kind The fire of goes lots like of that. different places, yeah. but I think it's a lot of different Night places. Kind of fire in his belly. Fire burning yeah. on the dance floor. That's where it can go as well. Yeah. His feet are on fire. He's a, he's a dancing king. Stuff like that. You can make lots of different uh, phrases like that. But it, I, what really, <laughs> what what can really you? impressed me uh, in Byun series versus Hero is his map control and his map movements. He really just outmaneuvered Hero on the map. It was so cool to watch in situations where, you know, it looked like Hero was going to take the game, but then he just maneuvered around and got to Hero's base first and was able to take the base trade very, very slightly and just right. barely defend against the Adepts. Like game three where he got the oh, supply yeah. deep was up at the last second and defended with just a small bit of bio yeah. in the Widow Mines. So sick. Yeah, game it's, three, it's really I cool. think, uh, really kind of told the tale of like the most even uh, matchup that then Beyond just tur turned on his head yeah. thanks to impeccable positioning. And also, uh, a lot of his games earlier versus Armani, the Zerg player in uh, GSL, uh, almost entirely decided because he was just so good at micro. And if you really mm -hmm. have to highlight any of the uh, different distinctions between our four top four um, uh, Terran players, kind of the four horsemen, Beyond, mm -hmm. uh, the thing to highlight would be his micro. Uh, he's yep. just so good at controlling all of his units, whether it's sucking Marines up and down into dropships to micro different stalker shots hitting them or controlling Reapers very early on. It just gets to insanity levels of goodness. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cool to watch. And 
Uh, another thing that added on to his greatness and his kind of skill set in my mind was, as I was talking about before, the map maneuvering. You know, he really identifies like, hey, Marine Marauder Medivac is going to be better when you split up the armies in two different directions compared to just like Adept Stalker. You know, everybody likes to complain and whine and moan about the Adepts, but actually Marine Marauder Medivac can do so much damage, especially when it gets to that like nitty gritty, very like guerrilla warfare style where there's like three fights going on uh, on the map. So I, I feel like Bjorn kind of identified that, especially on those big maps like Frost, and he was like, okay, I'm just going to outmaneuver you and take the game. So definitely lots of opportunity to do that here in, in a best of five. But as you said before, actually, which was a really good point, was, you know, these guys played a series, had, what was it, like 10 hours to think, yeah. I wonder how I'm going to beat this guy now after downloading three games from him. And now we're going to see definitely... It was a very exciting series, yeah. Rapid. No. Please, please. Oh, so exciting, oh my God. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> definitely these guys are going to show, you know, a bit more, uh, you know, downloaded information from that series they played earlier. Indeed they are, Brendan. They're going to show good games for the fans who have cheered for them. Uh -huh. uh, so here we go, guys. Our first game in what could be our best set up tonight, a rematch from earlier on today. Bion taking on Hero. This is going to be so sick, man. Oh, my Guys, God. Guys, get out there. Tell your friends this is on. I know this is on YouTube, and it's at a weird time. Maybe people don't know about the SSL challenge, but, hey, they were watching GSL earlier for this exact matchup, and now we have a best of five instead of a best of three. So tell them this is happening. This is pretty sick StarCraft that's on right now. That's very true. No amount of wellness will be had tonight, Brendan. Nothing but the sickest of games. Beyond the Blue Terran, Hero the Yellow Protoss, and uh, yeah, some sick games ahead of us for sure. And I really like the new best of five format that we have here for stage two. It gives these players a lot of preparation for playing this in an offline uh, setting, uh, getting them ready for the playoffs, for mm -hmm. the fast lane, whatever you are preparing for. Uh, it's been good enough for both of these players to advance out of their GSL groups. Uh, and so very, very good preparation as well. So spawning in here onto Abyssal Reef, a TVP. Now, one of the builds that Beyond really liked to go for versus Hero earlier on today and in some of his online matches versus uh, Protoss player is these double mind drops. And uh, sometimes he'll also go for these double stim drops that we've seen kind of phased out mm -hmm. as Protosses have gotten better at defending against them. But it currently looks like he is pathing to a very interesting spot, Brendan. Yeah, we actually saw this out of Special Hero when he played up against, or not Hero, Special Major when he played up against uh, Hero. And as I say that, actually, Vion is not going to be doing that build. I, I suppose he could scout and then go for the proxy factory. Yeah, so what he did was he scouted to see the Nexus, and now he's backing off of the proxy. Okay. Makes some sense. And it looks like he will be, in fact, going for that here. Marine will try to push away this probe. He actually gets that down on the correct position looks like. <laughs> Look at this probe. He's stuck He's still sticking around. On the other side of the command center. <laughs> I, uh, I had the it's like that never-ending game of tag where it, <laughs> one guy's on the opposite side of the pole, but he just can't get by. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's trapped. This is how you know the probe is the best unit in the game. It's like, oh! it's, it's better than... Oh, oh, did he make it out? Oh, it. no! Oh, oh, so just close. Barely. Hero. I think he almost had that. And it, yeah. Uh, either way, really, really sick <laughs> moves. <laughs> Bill with a, a small little toothy grin there for quite a bit. He's like, ah, I got him. <laughs> I mean, Ben's like a happy guy. I actually saw him talking uh, to. Um, to Deer a little bit earlier. Uh, they uh, were in the booth together. He was getting some sick anti-Protoss strats. There's no uh, no uh, racial s uh, s solidarity <laughs> being shown here. Uh-huh. Deer is just betraying <laughs> all the true. Protoss secrets. He's like, oh, no, this is just how you built Protoss. He's like, you know what the strongest build against Protoss right now is actually is is reactor blue flame hellion. You should try it, Beyond. <laughs> Beyond's like, oh, like, oh, oh really? really? Okay. okay. Yeah, just got to get that blue flame. Uh, what was the build we saw uh, yesterday? It's rushed BCs. La yesterday, or G uh, last week in GSL, we saw a um, drilling claws rush. Oh, yeah. And it just did absolutely nothing. It got like <laughs> one probe kill. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, cool. Good for you. I always feel like those days, by the way, this is totally scouted by Hero, so we'll have the very nice defense, and Beyond is going to know that he was scouted. So I wonder how he will respond to this, as here we'll have everything prepared for this. Although that Mothership Core is very late. So going to have to rely perhaps on some probe pulls to hit that Widow Mine. 
Yeah, and this uh, pro uh, proxy pylon from Hero as well. Also a little bit strange. Could see some uh, aggressive okay. orphans. But Hero is moving his stuff out of the way, actually to the natural, but okay, he's not actually going to drop this. That would just be suicide for the Widow Mines. And because nothing shoots up here in the Protoss base until that Phoenix comes out, Beyond actually waiting on that. Will Burrow one Widow Mine? He's actually going to get two probes, a little bit of a tiny bit of Miss Micro there from Hero. But he did save the second one, and okay, that did get a, uh, a third probe kill. I wouldn't say that's uh, the best, but he's also going to continue to do this really cool thing that we've seen uh, Terran start to evolve in the early game, which is find a way to trick oracles into running into your widow mines. So <laughs> you just put them in the most random yeah. locations. And you know, It's like mines with a sweeper, man. You, you just got to go around the map very, very carefully. Well, hold that thought. Because of the build that Beyond did, he doesn't have much back at home. So uh, Hero comes in here with an awkward amount of adepts before Beyond is really ready for it, getting a lot of damage done here. Quite a bit, yeah. And uh, still going to have some struggles there. This is the problem about going for this crazy amount of Widow Mines. You spend so much money on units that you'll just never have back in your base to uh, to help you out. And, uh, you know, maybe they catch an Oracle or two on the way, uh, but he's still double producing them out of that reactor factory. <laughs> why? My question is, why is the probe attacking that factory? It's like you're, you're not going to kill the factory. That probe could be mining. Here Very come in even decision. more adepts. This is taking <laughs> quite a toll on Beyond's economy. Trying to protect his SCVs and use them to fight just a meager number of Marines here back at home. Trying to defend against what is a huge number of adepts and the shade out keeps most of them safe. Yeah, keep in mind this is Glaivesless. Weird word that I just came up with right now, but uh, because it is Glaivesless, it's doing significantly less damage. If those adepts had Glaives, he probably could have taken out all the SCVs at the natural, and then we might be going into game number two, but obviously the build's not working out that way. His hero did go into Stargate first, only now making that Twilight count. That's how the probe kills the factory, or tries to? Not by, uh, ooh, is he gonna be able to burrow it? No! Okay, he started off with, and then I went to the no. It did look <laughs> remarkably close. However, uh, Bion has macroed out enough bio back at home to keep his base safe. Bion would make a great Under Armour commercial. <laughs> Gotta protect his house. Uh, and well, once... he's, he's kind of doing that so far. He's taking a lot of SCV losses, that's for sure. These adepts out of the slow warp in pylon on the left side of the map have just been quite brutal for Bion. A very nice response out of Hero once he saw the proxy factory starport. That's to say, Hero just doesn't quit. <laughs> Probably uh, best to avoid that shade, and he does. As much as those oracles try to point their lasery guns upwards, they cannot shoot that factory as it floats all the way home. Yeah. That fish almost ran into a, a phoenix there. <laughs> what? It's a fish that swim around the map, Rapid's right? actually just paying attention to the fish on the map, not actually the star crab. I mean, there are a lot of fish on the map. It's hard not to. That's true. It is a reef after all. The one thing that this build did do very nicely for Beyond is delay the third base for Hero. You could see that, you know, it took out a, a probe oh, over there. Oh, oh, the perfect Widow Mine position that will never actually fire. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, I think this Nexus was about a minute late, actually, because of that build. But Right, he did have the Widow Mine's burrow there to uh, stop the probe from coming in. There's actually still one there that our, our, our observer uh, was highlighting. Yeah. Also here doing it to himself a little bit with uh, making the adepts pretty early on. But yep. Either way, I, I think he's definitely in a very good spot now where he does have Blink about to finish up, which will definitely help out in the defense. Needs to clean up that Widow Mine eventually. Yeah, and Beyond actually way behind on workers here, about 10 down uh, from having to defend against all that early adept harass. So he's been trying to keep it even, but I mean, just imagine if these Widow Mines had done no damage, he'd be way further behind. Also, Byung playing a very similar style to what he played earlier on today, which is where he just doesn't expand to a third base. He just gets all the infantry upgrades and goes with 1-1 one, one stim combat shields. And then once the liberators come out, he goes for the attack. But Hero looking to take out a bit of these units before the fight even starts. There's that micro you were talking about from Beyond mm. lifting up all of the weakened Looks Marines. That's so insane. Good. Beyond's Micro is that, that restaurant that you go to 
and the waiter comes up and you're like, I would like to order, and he says, no, we only serve one thing. <laughs> because they know what's Micro. good. They're just that good, yeah. Uh, blink away, a great way to avoid that micro from being effective. Still, Bion pushing forward. He does have that plus one, plus one timing. Resident Glaives is not done yet, and the Guardian Shield is a bit late, so Bion taking some pretty good treats so far. Does have quite a few more otters mixed in there. Those will be very good against these Stalkers, and the first Liberator coming up to supplement this army as well. Yeah, keep in mind, when you look at the supplies, Bion is down heavily on workers, but ahead in army, and that Marine Marauder, there's not any AoE really here from Hero to take that out. So it looks like that Widowmine actually <laughs> weakened a lot of the infantry on the ground. Here we go, we're going for it. Both of those Liberators are getting a decent amount of damage. Down the Venus is flying over to Big Blink in from all of the Euro Stalkers. There's more Bio being rallied across the map, and there just might not be enough. Or will there, Brendan? So much damage being done. Extremely, extremely close. It looks like Hero will just barely hold this off. The Phoenix is really helping out there in the fights to push those Medivacs away. But still, the supplies remain pretty even here. The fight is not done with. These Widowmines survive, actually, which is pretty key. Could sneak those in there if he realizes them. And Hero actually moving very far out on the map to try to take these trades. Not sure about this, Rapid. Whoa, Although, no. as I say that. Yeah, he did have reinforcing stalkers there for the blink, and they will get a nice position there. Uh, Liberator setting up, so that will at least limit the uh, options that Hero has to go for. Blink's back away. Widowmines hit something. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, I mean, Bion did build a bunch of barracks. Bion, yeah, that Bion, he did. <laughs> Bion, Bion built a bunch of barracks. I feel like that's a tongue twister. He goes future. five racks on two base and just goes Widowmines reactor with reactor liberators and just tries to get in there. Hero is playing this extremely just feisty right now. He's trying to just counter attack with the depths. He's trying to use his blink micro in the middle of the map to delay the push. He's been Slightly successful, I have to say. But Bion, I feel like, is still in the advantage here. And he is moving on into the natural now. Yeah, Hero, especially with that third base up, Bion would have to do a oh, lot oh, of oh. damage here. So many probes going down there as those Widowmine shots do go off, but there's just not enough bio on the ground for Bion. Widowmine shots very, very good, but as you said, and also, as I was talking about the, before, these Adepts are getting incredible damage over here. They force that main orbital that went to the third to lift once again. Ooh. Finally, Bion has enough to hold this off. Look at our worker counts, Brendan. No! We're, we're about 12 minutes into the game, and it's 30 to 40 workers. <laughs> <laughs> no probe is All these here. widow mines are still alive. There's five widow mines over there. This is what happens when you just <laughs> never build observers. I, I think uh, Hero's warping in a cannon. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, there's actually six widow mines over here. Bion has to move those if he wants to keep them alive. This game is crazy, man. This is just game number one. Finally, a widow mine dies, Brendan. But uh, it's really been about the worker genocide. Even more and more going down. Looks like we might even see uh, additional workers being killed on both sides. Well, here we go, pulling the boys, sending them up front to try to buffer in front of these stalkers. Lots of bio back there, and even more workers die from beyond. He's on 23 workers against 35. He's essentially mining from one base, too. He's only mining from the natural because Hero denied mining at the third be. base for so long. It but Hero's still not killing these widow mines. I'm losing my mind, Rapid. I think Hero's losing his. Imagine Hero's thoughts. He's like, I wonder why just like half the workers all of a sudden. What could possibly be the problem? And he's choosing to kill the widow mines with, with cannons. And uh, the, the cannon warp in time, uh, I heard Artosis mention this earlier today, is you know longer than the recharge time on a widow mine. Yeah. So those are going to get another shot off. It's very true. But I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures. That's essentially what we've been seeing out of Hero as now all the probes from the natural try to kill one widow mine. Well, uh oh, it's, it's, oh, there's another one there on the left. No. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, that could have been way worse, but even still, four more probes <sighs> being taken out. I feel like these widow mines are almost the only thing keeping Bion in this game. He dropped down so low on workers, and even still only has 27 on the same two bases. Yeah, it's definitely part of it. I feel like Hero also trying to really push the issue with just Adepts and Stalkers at the end of the last fight when he was at Bion's. Army, I think he should have gone in there, mm -hmm. forced the third base to lift, 
poke a little yeah. bit, see that he can't take the fight. <laughs> oh man, if he was targeting that, so much more damage. But then yeah. just back off. But here I feel like he took a not so great fight there earlier on. Well, now look at Beyond's this trying to push on army. him. Beyond has a massive amount of army here. If you just do what all good followers of the Church of Todd are taught to do and look at the supply, you can see that there are in fact so many more, so many much more armies there for Beyond. A super duper amount of units. Indeed. Indeed, Brendan. Oh, that's another big hit. Another big connection, and uh, it looks good for Beyond. He's going to be able to send the entirety of his bio ball forward. No, no, that Widow Mine about to come off cooldown again. Will we see even more mine damage? Okay, that one just uh, taken out. Some sentries. That's GG, go. Beyond! Through sheer tenacity almost, Whoa. and a little bit of Widow Mine <laughs> usage. The Widow Mine Terrorist taking Hero out of the first game of what that. is already <laughs> shaping up to be an insane series. That game was just out of control, man. I mean, the thing out of control I, there were the Widow Mines, man. Oh my god. The Who Widow Mines. build an observer? One. Like, well, I he didn't he, have a robotics facility for the entirety okay. of the game. W truly, what an investment to make, man. Save all your probes forever. But you have to build a robotics facility. I mean, I know it's a sacrifice, Brendan, but... One observer definitely would have helped him <laughs> gain control of his base that he didn't have control of for the last yeah. five minutes of the game. Mm. But mm. as I was saying before, I felt like he just did enough damage in his mind, and he was like, okay, I want to try to end it here. But we saw that in Game 3 of their GSL series, too, where a Hero was like, no, I can just go to your base and kill you with my army, but it's just barely not enough. It's like he's underestimating the amount of damage that Bio can do with SCVs to tank. And even though, as you were saying, you know, Byung went down to like 20 SCVs, he was still able to win the battle, and that's eventually what gave him the push to win that game. Somehow, some way, we are underway with our second game of this series, Byun versus Hero. Another day to blame someone. Sounds like the Star Trek ladder to me. Oh yeah. Here we go, our second game of the night. Fly better fly up here in the blue. Brooklyn, we go hard. <laughs> Is that, what, is. is that what you That's do, his in Brendan? Name. That's I, what Beyond stands for. I feel for. like you would know about that, Brendan. B W G H. Yeah, of course. That's my that's my motto of life. Do you have it tattooed right in the small of your back? Exactly. <laughs> that's where you got to yeah. put your motto, guys. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. I'm I'm from Queens, but I pretend I'm from Brooklyn to seem cooler. Only cool kids come from Brooklyn. Yeah. That's where the boys go when they're back. So in town. sad, rapid. <laughs> where, where are you from in Texas? Dallas. Dallas. Is there a cool place to be in Texas? I mean, is it, it Houston? Uh, I think it might or be Austin. Austin. I think Austin is like the cool place to be nowadays. Okay. Has is that where all the hipsters now. live? You're not wrong. Am I really? <laughs> it, is, it is quite quite an area. It's been uh, heavily gentrified. Okay. Let's put it that way. All right. Uh, back to the gentrification of the map Daybreak. I guess that is basically what all of our players are up to. Looks yeah. like we're going to have a two rack start here for Beyond. Now, uh, he did this versus uh, uh, versus Armani, the Zerg player in GSL, built nothing but Reapers, and then just killed him. And in fact, Brendan, it is not two, but three uh, barracks. Yeah, just trying to play it safe after the CC. He wants to make sure he doesn't get killed by anything that Hero can do. Going to delay his tech a bit, but... Yeah, and we've actually... Th this isn't like an, an all-in Reaper shenaniganry mm -hmm. thing or, or anything like that. Uh, as you can see, there's no gas, uh, so he's not going to be going for that. But this is just a way that you can produce enough Marines early to safely take that expansion, like you said. Yeah, you know, it, say Hero's going for a super fast proxy Stargate. Yep. It's going to be not easy to hold, because even the Oracle can do well against a low number of Marines, but... It'll give you the easiest chance, the best chance to hold it off. You can see that he is adding his gases now, but yep. tech is going to be delayed quite heavily. Hero going for a very fast robotics facility. <laughs> it's like, I gotta get those observers out, guys. What if he brings the Widow Mines back? <laughs> Hero's gonna wake up in a cold uh, sweat in the middle of the night, <laughs> and then he's gonna explode because there's a Widow Mine under his bed. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I actually had a dream last night that I was hallucinating. It was kind of scary. There was like a giant cartoon bee 
But I, it was so realistic that I thought I was really living in real life, and I didn't know it was a dream, and that made it even more scary. You know what I'm saying? Have any government people in black glasses picked you up in a van recently, Brendan? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you might well, be Well, not that I remember, Rabbit. <laughs> exactly. See, that's where they get you. Friggin' neuralizers, man. Ooh. All right. Trying to get a scout there. Doesn't. Uh, Probe does see the expansion, though, so he knows mm -hmm. it's not any kind of crazy one base. Um, and yeah, there are those uh, Marines that will be protecting against the, the Phantom Oracle. Yeah, and look at the build of Hero. He's trying to get over there and kill him. Four gates and a warp prism. Four gateways. Hmm. I think I've seen this somewhere else, Brendan. Against only Marines with Guardian Shield, this can actually do a really big number if you don't have bunkers. So Bjorn, he's he needs to get that scout off. He needs to read the build tier of Hero or else he might be in some trouble. Yeah, and right now, Bion has chosen, instead of keep pumping off of those barracks, to build the reactors, which take an eternity uh, to construct. So that'll be a big hiccup in his macro. And uh, even though Bion might think that he's uh, been okay until now, he's about to be very much not okay, Brendan. Looks like he might just ferry into the main. Ooh, it's okay. pretty close here. There's you can't just do it immediately, but it's not like an elevator, but he's going to try to get in here. There's a lot of Marines Ooh. in position. Perfectly done by Bion so far. Yeah, Bion already knows what's coming his way, and I think he probably is aware. Yeah, there's that bunker coming down. He is aware that this is going to be all in. Yeah. So Pretty late on the bunker. Lots of Stalker series forced to pull the SCVs now. Uh, he needs to make sure that he does focus fire here. A couple of not that great uh, force fields. And Bion holds on for the time being. Just needs to get that bunker up behind. So he's going to be sacrificing quite a few SCVs. But as soon as that bunker completes, uh, he will at least have a little bit of a better shot at defending this. Yeah, gets that bunker up, the immediate repair. And sniping the sentry was really, really big for Bion, too. The hero is going to try to go for the main. This is very, very important time right now. Stim about to finish up. And everything is going to, in fact, ferry into the main. All the SCVs are going to be pulled. If Hero can get one more warp in, I think he might just end this game. Yeah, and there is that last and final warp in. Lots of bio here. More and more SCVs being pulled. And I mean, Hero is defending admirably, but he's just losing so many SCVs. OK, the Protoss units are dying. This is something that uh, I, I did not expect, guys. But I think the 33 SCVs makes this more than worth it. <laughs> 33 SCVs. Five and a half minutes into the game, you guys can see the trade here and units lost. Beyond definitely not getting the better end of this trade. And, you know, you might say, hey, it's Terran. Can he just come back with mules? Well, on only two orbitals and this early on in the game, it's, it's, Hero's going to get a massive lead from it as he begins or restarts his uh, economy production himself. Yeah, and there's an observer there that if it gets scanned and taken out, Hero just walks across the map and kills you because you'll never be able to get the minerals from that mural. Uh, but uh, you gotta say, Beyond's defense was very admirable, but Hero uh, did he get the critical damage done that he needed to. Yeah, very cool build for this map, you know. This is the same amount of workers at six minutes that we had at 15 in the last game. <laughs> yeah. I knew this series was going to be lit. Well, in Rabbit. fact, it is, uh, it is the SSL series. So yeah, it's always that way. <laughs> Bio back in the main. A hero, or a Beyond rather, doing a very vigilant job of keeping that warp prism out of his base, not allowing any huge crazy warp ins to put him uh, even further behind. He's definitely got his eyes peeled, Rabbit. How does that <laughs> saying even work? Like, who invents that saying, Brendan? I don't, I don't even know exactly what that means. Hearing that gives me the same <laughs> feeling as like scraping your fingernails on a chalkboard. Like, yeah. What a terrible saying. Who peels eyes? It, it must have had a different meaning way back in the day. I to, like, hope so. To peel man. your eyes is to open your eyes very wide Ugh. or something like that. I now have this very uncomfortable feeling. Or does it mean like taking off the eyelids as I make rapid visibly cringe in visibly. front of my eyes. Visibly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> OK. Anyway. Back to StarCraft. The only thing making me cringe here is how good Protoss all-ins are. Uh, but for Beyond, he's done a great job at getting himself back into the game. Finally does scan to kill, out the, kill off that uh, observer right at the same time as he moves out across the map with a couple of dropships, which will be Ooh. spotted. 
Also, I really like Hero's approach to this too. He did a lot of damage to Bion, and then he went into full tech up mode and economy mode. Got the Robotics Bay actually before he started that third Nexus, but essentially everything on time here, not too greedy with it either. And he does want to transition into this later game style we've been seeing more often from Protosses with the Colossi mixed in. And beyond so far behind, I'm not sure what the answer will be. It seems like an attack at the third base will be the beginning of it. But with Blink Stalkers, Guardian Shields, two Immortals, and a Colossus, <laughs> Beyond immediately runs back home with his tail between his legs. Okay, so I, I feel like this is also not necessarily uh, a very hopeful push for uh, Beyond. We can call it that. Um, because after you take that much damage, you're really just not in a position to go across the map and fight your opponent. Um, Especially with these Colossi coming out. Uh, did, he, uh, did he already get the extended Thermal Lands? I don't believe so. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. Um, probably starting in here. And, and now he gets to give a hero a little bit of his own medicine. So this has to run by that overcharged pylon. He will get into this mineral line. Does Beyond have enough here to defend? And indeed, he will pick that up. I hope he doesn't lose one of those dropships. In fact, one very low and he will. Ooh. Nice control there from Hero, splitting his army up very, very nicely. I was a bit scared. Ooh, oh, that was very close. Low. Lucky medevac, but I was scared when Hero was warping and only stalkers against that, and Beyond kind of just bravely dropped right on top of it. He did lose nine probes for sure, but does have that third base up. He just needs to stabilize and get to a place where he can actually saturate it, because as of yet, he's not actually making probes, and Maybe he just wants to go for the attack, actually. I mean, Bion is not in a terrible spot right now. If you look at the worker count, somehow Bion is now ahead in workers of Hero. He's also able to pull back, and uh, I mean, the army count also fairly even, about 70 uh, on both sides, oh. but these two Colossi are really what's going to change it. Yeah, he's coming on in, and so many Marines. Really fantastic force fields there from Hero, cutting that army perfectly in half. Picking up those Colossi, it looks like one did uh, drop down, but Hero looks like he will have enough here to eventually come on in here and take out Beyond. Ties the series up one to one. And boy, do we have a series here, Rapid. And HH indeed, Brendan. <laughs> Lots of Korean characters that are on the oh. same keys as G's. <laughs> Wow, yes. uh, yeah, what a game. Hero, very uh, aggressive, very uh, well executed all in. Bion equally as good at defending, but then uh, the Colossi Tech came out and Bion just unprepared. Yeah, I just took way too much damage there. The bunker was a little bit late. I don't think he was expecting that kind of build from Hero, but we say this a lot. It's kind of what makes Hero so good as a player. You see this from Dark, too. It's like, you never know if he's going to play his insanely strong macro style or just come at you with a total curveball and say, hey, I, I'm not really feeling Daybreak. I think I might catch him off guard on this map. I'm going to go for a four-gate all-in on 28 probes, and you're just not going to see it coming. Yeah, I, I think you're really starting to get a feel for the different styles that different Protosses do play. I have a lot of people who may not watch a ton of Pro StarCraft come to me and say, well, I mean, there's only three races. How can you have, like, you know, 50 players, all of whom, you know, don't just look exactly the same? I'm like, well, it's actually kind of easy. Very different styles here mm -hmm. for Hero. And, I, you know, I know he's playing a different, he's playing against a different race, but uh, still a very different style than, than you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. That was really cool build on the map. Uh, Daybreak can definitely be hard with the very spaced out bases. Terrans can essentially drop you to death if you're not careful. Especially that Colossus timing there as the follow-up can be sometimes hard to work out on that map if you're just going straight macro versus macro. But the early pressure from Hero allowed him to transition and eventually take that game. We're going to jump into set number three now. For Beyond versus Hero, this will be on Belcher Vestige. Fly better fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our blue Terran player starting off in the bottom right hand corner. Chilling out. It's Beyond. I like that little heart at the bottom of yeah. Brooklyn We Go Hard, too. <laughs> Brooklyn We Go Heart. <laughs> Spread the love. It's like, hey. we go hard. Heart? <laughs> I, don't th I think it's sending mixed messages here. Oh. Here we go, Hero oh coming in boy. with a very fast probe. And this is becoming very common. You know, you just come over here, you're not trying to steal gases. You essentially just get over there and you harass as soon as humanly possible. Then the 
The Terran already has to pull off one SCV and keep it there to build stuff, mm -hmm. as is just the way Terran uh, SCVs work compared to the other workers yeah. of the other aces. But you're, you're forcing all these other SCVs off, and also you get a full scout of your opponent and then exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I think that I, the, the workers are actually, at least in my opinion, one of the most unique uh, things about StarCraft because you think about how fundamental they are just to the economic you know, part of an RTS. Um, you know, mining or farming or whatever gives you the resources that you use. Um, but it's StarCraft to see each different worker has a different way of building things. Like uh, Zergs, you lose the worker. Terrans, you lose the worker for a little bit and get it back. Uh, Protoss, you don't lose the worker at all. And yet somehow it's all, uh, you know, very, uh, very balanced, uh, very different things that you can do with the workers. Um, you know, like, uh, probes tend to be great at harassing because they regenerate their shields. Um, well, drones tend to be really good at dying a lot, and uh, <laughs> SCVs are... Sacrificing themselves. <laughs> that they do, man. For the good of the swarm. Like, drones definitely get shafted <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, they can turn into spore colonies to avoid being killed by things like orcs. true. So. And aren't those buildings just, like, kind of living buildings, too? They are. Don't they live on and kind of you know, have a purpose and stuff. I think that's definitely the way it works. We are going to have a fast Twilight Council this time in Game 3. So Hero, he goes for Stargate, and then Robotics, and then Twilight Council. So he's saying, hey, the meta is not stale. I don't just play Phoenix Adept every single game. I'm going to mix it up. And finally, in Game 3, we might get to see everybody's very beloved Phoenix Adept style, if it does get to it. But starting off with the Twilight Council means that he wants to put on a lot more pressure first. Generally, with that Phoenix Adept style, you see the Stargate first with yeah. the Harass, and then you make Phoenixes after the Oracles. We'll see what kind of way he wants to go in here. Actually, it's going to be a Dark Shrine, so something totally... Way out of left field, you do not see this very often rushed in this matchup anymore. Yeah, this is really interesting. You can see Hero trying to go for a wide variety of uh, oh, yeah. craziness. Uh, so is, this will be pretty cool. He's going to be hiding this pylon way out of vision. This shouldn't be somewhere that Beyond scouts. If Beyond does go for a scan in the main base, there's a chance he sees just barely the edge uh, of that tech. So it will be interesting. Um, I think I use the word interesting a whole lot. I'm actually very interested in the game of StarCraft. It's quite a build. It's quite an interesting build. Indeed it is. I, I was uh, I was guilty of that a lot, too. I, I do it a lot, too, nowadays, anyway. It's, it's, it's a hard habit to break, for sure. I think that mine's just a little bit off being beside, behind the uh, satellite dish there on the yeah. natural. But here we go. Here comes a drop. And even if this drop fails, if it does get in and see what's coming his way, at least Beyond will know, and I feel like that will have paid for itself, given how much Hero has invested in this DT tech. And Hero might be in a bit of trouble. I'm not sure if he went for a Mothership Core with how fast he got this uh, Dark Shrine, so that drop could actually do a bit of damage. We're not actually getting a look at it right now as it's in the natural. Killing stuff! Killing ah, stuff! it's killing stuff! Okay, well, okay, there, there we go. Finally, the probes on the run, completely uh, evacuated. They're going to try to turn an attack with a couple of Adepts. Instead of Meanwhile, the DT's coming on in here. The engineering bay is incredibly late. Need to go ahead and raise that perfect scan there. Will he be able to take them all oh. out? <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> 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 well, it's just barely out of range. Oh, oh, and he couldn't lift the depot, too. So one gets in, but Beyond doing a lot of damage over here. The question is, can he get a missile turret up? Will he have another scan coming in? He's trying to hold position around that turret. It looks like some stalkers over here are going to push away the drop of Beyond. Here's another scan, trying to get it. Will it get away again? It will. Oh, oh man. The little Dark Templar that could survive just long enough, boosting Ooh. away their Seven health, one hit away. Luckiest dropship on the re planet. He right recalled there. that mothership core, and he wasn't in time. Oh boy, this game is getting out of control. Yeah, now supply blocked, and not even raising those supply depots uh, at, at his ramp to try to contain this Dark Templar. Um, oh, can't do it now. Yeah, also very low on scan energy. I think he has one coming up in his main. Uh, but very, very low energy on those. Still no way to detect. Uh, Raven is about to pop. Okay, there it is. There it is. You can see Hero is actually targeting a bunch of supply depots. I just wanted to avoid the missile turrets. 
can get a bit of damage. He actually supply blocked Bjunk for quite a while. So after all, after the dust has settled, I mean, the DTs did a bit of damage, but I feel like Bjorn did a lot of damage at the base of Hero himself. He denied a lot of mining, got about six probe kills, I think, in total. And yeah. he saved a lot of those Marines, too, because he got away with that medevac at the end of it all. So Bjorn in a pretty nice spot mm -hmm. now. Yeah, it's easy to look at a situation like this and say, okay, Bjorn defended. But in that one word, is so much micro decision making, oh, yeah. uh, scan energy management, uh, positioning, like all this stuff. So you can't really just say defended. Any, anytime somebody says, well, he just defended that attack, I'm like, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did the thing. I was like, oh, no, he was actually just a spectacular player, one of the best in the world, and that's what it looks like. Because yeah. you do one thing, one thing, just the least little bit wrong, and you just die. I mean, if he loses that medevac full of Marines, he's definitely in a bit of a wonky spot. Oh boy, speaking Whoa. of wonky, do you guys like 12 Adepts with Resonating Glaze? Because I know I do. Heard you like Adepts, so I, I adapted your Adepts adeptly into the Adepts and then into the main base. And so here we go, taking out that uh, missile turret just to allow any future Dark Templar to be more effective. Oh. Siege tank getting shaded on top of, but now lots of these Adepts, uh, not actually killing workers, just getting into the infrastructure and going for yet another warp in. Yeah, another warp in, that's pretty huge. Thankfully, Byun does have a wall at the front, but if he wants to save those SCVs, he will have to let them down. Uh, you just can't be in two Oh, he's going for the stim. Oh, no. oh, he's the gonna stim. get it. Oh my god, he's gonna get stim. This is terrible. I, I can't actually emphasize how big getting that stim is. It just makes these Marines so much less effective. Uh, Adept's just really everywhere. Main base, natural. And the War Prism is pretty big, but he still has to defend here. Yeah, as great as Liberators are, uh, not going to be super great in this situation. And here come all the Adepts right on top of all the workers, all the Marines. That's not the greatest place to put them. Yeah, definitely very overzealous here from Hero. Trying to get on in there and a very good response out of Bion. Hero does take out a lot of the SCVs for sure, but we're still on two base versus two base and a very late third against Terran as Protoss is not what you want. So Bion... Look, uh, Again, he holds to simplify things. Look at what Bion is building. He's building one. Uh, so these are on different buildings, obviously, but it looks kind of funny to see that he's building three tech labs, but they're in different <laughs> columns. Yeah, I guess one is on a factory. Yeah, or a factory like tech that. lab is apparently different than a barracks tech lab, even though you can swap them out interchangeably. Yeah. Also, what's up with that? Because if you build a tech lab to research something, the tech lab stays the same, but by virtue of being connected to a different building, all of a sudden you research different things out of it. Those guys are, they're, they're very talented people that work in the tech lab, Rabbit. Don't take anything away from them. Yeah, but if you can research. They were just reassigned oh. to the factory instead of the barracks. <laughs> all right, well, way to drop right into siege tank fire. Hero gonna have to vacate the premises. Uh, does not want to have to uh, you know, risk being uh, reassigned. <laughs> forcibly out of the base. Yeah. Well, you we have an interesting build here from Hero as a follow-up. He's actually getting Storm very fast. This might be something that Bion doesn't expect. Already three High Templar in the main, building up energy. Hidden for now, but also in position to feed back some Metavacs if they do come in. Looks like he's actually going to hide them in the Warp Prism for now. I suppose he could go for some storm drops even, but it's kind of scary when you see that many Widow Mines, because if yeah. you run into just the wrong angle, you lose a War Prism with wow. three High Templar in them. The luckiest Adept gets away with two HP, and yeah, I, you can even expect Hero to have a little bit of PTSD after game number one, losing so many probes, a game-losing number of probes uh, that he lost there, so you're going to have to be careful, and you can see him just keeping it with his army. I, w I would say otherwise that he was trying to protect the ghosts from EMP, but there's no ghosts out, and even beyond, still without completing Stim by the uh, ten and a half minute mark, mm. and it's insanely delayed. It's interesting to see how Byun ends up in the same spot after so many different things happen early game in all these games. He still ends up in this two base location with an incredible amount of Marine Marauder Medivac with upgrades and then just some Widow Mines and some Liberators added in. 
Hero wants to take the fight before the Liberators are actually with this army. And the Widowmines are not set up, and oh there's a my huge God, storm! The biggest storms of his life. Hero right on top of Vian's army. Forced into full retreat, trying to drop those uh, High Templar off for feedbacks, gets one. Uh, but it's not enough to kill that Raven. And you can say that, or you can see rather, that Byun was not expecting these storms. It had his entire army grouped up against a wall and ate a big one on all those Marines. A lot of them being healed up now by the medevacs. There aren't too many medevacs, though. I only see three. And still more storms where that came from. Somehow, 14 probes die, meanwhile. I mean, that's what a Liberator does, not reacting to it in time and beyond getting crazy economic damage done at the same time that he's running his entire army away. I mean, this just goes to show the mind of Bion, uh, and, and and truly how incredible it is running away and like we can as observers uh, and, and viewers even uh, watching him run away saying oh man he got stormed he's losing this fight and all of a sudden he kills 14 probes it's like truly Bion uh, that is uh, on top of things stimming forward taking out the worker line not enough stalkers there to defend Bion stims his entire way through ravaging the countryside oh man. This is just a couple of medevacs worth of bio. They got 11 probes, a high templar, a warp prism. And back at home, he was just defending with a really nice siege setup of widow mines and liberators. That hero was just too timid to walk into. And I feel like it was the right choice, but I love the reaction out of Beyond to immediately pick up two medevacs worth and go for a drop. Incredible game sense out of this Terran player. Beyond is like, like the Trogdor of StarCraft. He goes through burninating the countryside. Oh, yeah. Kill, taking out all of Hero's uh, thatched roofed cottages. <laughs> That's what Bion does. Nothing left in his wake. Struggling to uh, take a, another base of his own as the orbital was taking a day off, just floating in the sky. But now he's moving on over to that third base. The Marauder probably did not want to get dropped out of that medevac, but oh, nice force fields going down there. Plenty of mines, but them not going off here. Oh man, starting to go oh, off there. And a nice hit onto Hero's army. I love the way that Beyond the entire day today, in the GSL series, in this series, whenever he goes for this style, he is so good at baiting Hero into Widow Mine shots. And somehow, some way, he always just gets the money shot, and Hero still really hasn't downloaded that information saying, hey, I need observers with this army to see this, or hey, I need an oracle with this army so I can tag it, so I can scout ahead and make sure I'm safe. Maybe just the multitasking of hero failing a little bit as well. Maybe those army units pushing a little bit too far forward. Ooh, nice pick off on that Raven, trying to take a sneaky sneak around the map. The sneaky sneak. Indeed, yeah. the sneakiest of sneaks even. Uh, well, I guess it was not because it got picked off, but even still, okay, also these Marines, not very sneaky. Pretty uh, stinky sneak at that. Okay, wow, so many mines. Hero figured out, or uh, Beyond figured out that, whoa, how do you whoa, mean Hero? Whoa, whoa. Lots of mines. <laughs> Hero almost ran straight into five Widow Mines. Okay, Hero does not have that many storms left, and he's going to pick up a crazy amount of probes in the background. That is so obnoxious. Any time Hero's like, okay, I'm ready to take the fight, Beyond's like, nah, -uh. I got one liber Liberator in position. You have to immediately regroup your army, decide if you're going to go back, how you're going to defend. Ooh, okay, nice blink away. Hero's starting to learn. Uh, but, oh, so many Widow Mines. Nine. Be nine Widow Mines. Nine. Nine <laughs> times. Hero's going to be saying nine as he runs straight into the nine Widow Mines. <laughs> Do not want. All right. Uh, Although he is gr Korean. Yeah. I was say, he's not German. Although there are some German words in Korean. Yeah. I think uh, Arbeit. 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 Yeah. Arbeit. Pretty good one. Also in Japanese. Interesting fact. Uh, all right. So big uh -oh. one mine shots. Oh, no. Oh, the humanity. The I don't know. Okay. He like, finally has an observer. Wow, 14 SCVs going down while even more probes are being killed. Uh, Hero not microing his army in the middle of the map. He needs to kill off that High Templar and he takes it out before it storms. Oh, that's pretty huge. I love the position here. Just enough Marine Marauder to take out all of that Protoss army and doing enough economic damage to Hero at the same time. Orbital does live. Another 13 kill Liberator Jeez. is the MVP. And we're here again, Rapid, 29 to 25 <laughs> workers at 16 minutes into the game. 
no this is becoming standard save. for Beyond versus Hero. You, you know, uh, in SSL, a stats uh, icon is a probe with a halo because he uh, loses a ton of workers. <laughs> uh, but I feel like maybe we need to hand that one on over to Hero. He has lost an insane number of workers in both of his games this series. Oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, Honorary icon for today for Hero. <laughs> Here at the SSL. Okay, well. The lone Dark Templar out there. Oh, look at this. Beyond is so good at this. I love it. Oh, he's hey, Hero's so not sneaky. biting the bait here, though. He, he just doesn't so have enough stuff. Sneaky. Ah, oh, I love the mind games. Hero, Widowmind is really drilling not only into the ground, but into Hero's brain. And uh, kind of mind gaming oh. him here, here at this point. Yeah, there's just not enough on the ground. 18 army supply for Hero as Beyond stims his way through. And yes, there is one Dark Templar, but no longer. Okay, now there's two. Now there's none. GG. Beyond takes game number two. Three. <laughs> eight. Ten. I don't know. How uh, many games are we playing tonight, Game number C. <laughs> uh, apparently, the, the Korean uh, version of SSL Challenge is doing very, very well. Shout out to those guys. Yeah, just killing it. Everybody uh, on our different online communities seems to love it. Uh, but not as much as they love these games of StarCraft. Incredible games uh, coming out tonight. Beyond one game away from clinching this series. He has the same score against Hero that he did earlier on in the GSL. Can he do one better? You can see the look on Byun's face. He doesn't look phased at all. Not this guy's all. probably used to playing from earlier than GSL started to later than when this game will end. Yeah, and so here we go. Uh, spawning in the lower right-hand corner. Going hard, not only in Brooklyn, but also in Korea. Mm. Uh, it's Byun. <laughs> and his opponent needs to win two in a row to take the best of five. Against one of the harder opponents here, it is Hero. Part of Root Gaming. Yeah, and uh, beyond part of Team Expert. And uh, coming up next, we actually get a chance to see TY, who uh, recently joined Splice. So Very cool. Lots of foreign teams being represented in the GSL. You know, uh, I feel like foreign teams really kind of played the long game when it came to uh, Korean StarCraft. We'll just wait five years for the players to leave the Korean teams and the Korean teams to disband, and then we'll pick up the best then players. we'll win every GSL. We'll take over the land of Korea. One step at a time. All right, we'll see what Moon Jae-in has to say about that now. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just create tons of maps that only foreign team Protoss players can win on. Oh, SOS yeah. just wins every tournament. Mm, all part of the plan. All right, uh, so here comes that annoying scouting pro that we saw just like in our last series. It will see. And then indeed there is a command center coming down. And I really like this start from beyond. More command centers mean that you can build more workers. That means when both players inevitably reach zero, which will happen about, you know, 10 minutes into this game, he'll be able to build his workers back faster. <laughs> Going for the three barracks build again. I love how he just lifts the Supply Depot in the face of that probe. He's like, I'm going to try to keep you out here, but actually there's a hole in the wall. You know, my theory is that probes don't actually have faces, and that's just like the spots on butterfly wings that are designed to attract <laughs> predators. And maybe the uh, the probe's face is actually just that little, like, uh, uh, phase engine in his butt. Maybe he just Could moves be. backwards the entire day and just protects his eyeballs. You know Wobbuffet? You know that Pokemon? I do. Where it's actually like a tiny little creature behind a giant you know yeah yeah maybe that's what a probe is maybe there's like a tiny little alien inside of the probe mechanical body <laughs> that's controlling the probe machine it's like a different version of the marine except it's an alien inside what <laughs> that's entirely different I, i'm creating my own <laughs> creating my own lore as we go here it's part of the fun of casting starcraft they originally asked Brendan to be the balance designer for uh, StarCraft, but David Kim took your job. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I wanted to be the guy that writ, wrote the lore for all the expansions, but they, they didn't like my ideas, Rapid. Very sad. We have something different from Hero in Game 4. This is kind of just the way. You know, there's some players, like if you look at Bill, he's basically just going to do the same build every mm -hmm. every game and just try to out-macro you and outplay you. Biel, uh, rather, Hero is like, Okay, well, I'm just going to do something different every time and see if he can handle all my different builds. So, an interesting way to play the matchup. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he does recognize that he has spawned, uh, you know, in horizontal. Wait, is that that's vertical? Okay, mm -hmm. how's it work? It's too confusing. Uh, Rapid has passed the fourth grade. It, well, <laughs> you know, sometimes, other times, I wish I had paid a little bit more attention. Um, the one thing that gets me is like longitude and latitude. I still have no idea which one of those is which. Latitude is fatitude. Yeah. They go the fat way across the world. Are longitude you, is, is the long way. <laughs> That's a thing, man. Okay, hold that thought. Uh, enough about longitude. We have Hero saying, okay, well, I can't beat him in a straight-up game. Let's just try to adept him. He's making eight gateways and just trying to kill him here on two eight. bases. That's a high number of gateways, Brendan. He's going to say, hey, I'm going to make a bunch of adepts, and I hope he's not ready for it. Okay, well, you know, it's very difficult to be ready for something of this uh, this magnitude of all-in. Uh, and so you can already see Beyond has that bunker up the front. Um, and, oh, this Marine Ooh. might actually scout that war prison coming out. That was close. Ooh. Okay, Marine is going to run back into the bunker. And, oh, I like the double, uh, uh, what do you call those, supply depots. Yeah, yeah up Beyond front. seems to already know something's up. He's making a full wall. Yeah, fully walling off at the front. And I think he's also going to start moving some Marines back to the back of his base to prevent this uh, War Prism from coming out. Yep, he already has a big ball there ready and waiting. If he's got Stim when this hits, oh, it's going to make it a lot easier to, this is like to hold it off. This is like the most all there is. Look at the missile turret. Missile turret in perfect position. How is he so well prepared? Now, it's Needs not units, though. Yeah, not totally going to push it backwards, but he's going to have to split it because he sees another War Prism coming into the main. Oh, the sickest all in here from Hero. Eight Adepts into the main, as the Adepts from the Natural actually shade into the main at the same time. The other Adepts on the left side are not fighting currently. They gotta hel help their buddies over there on the left side, on the right side, rather. Okay, so Beyond actually picking off quite a few Adepts here. Uh, pooling his SCVs and charging them forward. Now, this is an insane number of Adepts to be fighting here, but so many Marines actually uh, already produced by Beyond. I I think he might be okay. <laughs> well, right. and then okay. Wow. Okay, actually, one war prism is yeah. taken away. That's so pretty huge. This is going to be big. That means that all Beyond has to do is raise those supply depots, and this is going to be difficult uh, to to deal with. Uh, Hero has shut down mining there at the natural, um, but he hasn't actually killed all that much here from Beyond. I, he's, I, he's denying so much mining, yeah. and you can see that he's transitioning back at home. He's not trying to just only kill him here. He's teching up, getting a Dark Shrine, Blink, and not another gigantic oh. warp in of Adepts. He's saying, okay, I've done so much damage, I'll keep you in your main and get extremely far ahead. Srubian floats his uh, command center all the way across the map and gets a ninja location. <laughs> Hero thinks he's just on one base this whole time. Nothing could be further from the truth. All right, so Hero pulling back and saying, all right, we're good. I did shut down that second base uh, very, very hard. Killed off those assimilators. Cut, that's a wrap for Act 1 of Game 4. Mm. Moving on to Act 2, just a bit of an intermission. At this point, uh, Bian is kind of the, uh, there's a metaphor like the, the nightingale in the golden cage. That's Bian trapped inside uh, Hero's maze. Makes sense. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying like, to... yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> I get it. I get it. That's that's true. Oh, look at Guessing that. Start... Two two mules. Yikes. Uh, yeah, big pick off there. That's uh, the big comeback mechanic, kind of for uh, for Terran to recover from having lost a bunch of units. Look at that. 13 adepts to 15 workers and 12 marines. That's not the worst trade uh, that Bian could make. But Hero is macroing behind this. Throwing up another uh, Nexus behind that, so I don't know why I say behind it. Why, how do we assign directions to different things that we say? Like, why are buildings being thrown down when we also say that buildings are being erected? So they're being built up and thrown down simultaneously. How does it work? Oh, All right. missile turret oh, timing. Sickest timing there. And uh, will this Dark Templar be able to survive? And Hero is just really not letting up the pressure on Beyond. Yeah, I doubt that missile turret was for the DTs. I think he had no idea this was coming. There's not even a missile turret in the main. And he knew there was a war prison man on the map still. This is getting crazy amounts of damage. Eight Ooh. SCVs. Again, going down, one Dark Templar picked off. And I I think the other one was also killed in the natural. Actually, I think there is still one alive there. War Prism still alive, and <laughs> Beyond just stalled in the middle of the map. Stalled. There we go. Stalled. Stalled. <laughs> <laughs>
be tiny movement. He's gosh darn styled there. Young's actually got a sizable force. I think Hero has to be careful. He loses his widow, his uh, war prism. The thing that he is lacking here is, is Metavax, it seems. A pretty substantial bio force. Okay, one Guardian Shield being forced out there. He's gonna step forward, picks off that uh, uh, sentry, and now he's gonna be running right up onto all of these Immortals. Still lots of Stalkers there, but many Marines left over. More reinforcements joining the fight on both sides, but that Immortal getting a crazy amount of value. And it looks like just enough here for Hero. Bjorn, he tries to take that fight. His economy was in tatters. He essentially had no transition, so. Nice try out of him. Maybe if he had tried to go for some more sneaky plays, like a drop at the third base while uh, stimming into the natural or something like that, but you know what I would decides do? to take the straight up fight. I would what? love to see Hero just put down a fourth base right now. Just say, okay, well, there's nothing you can do to me. I will make it out of this, and uh, there's nothing you can do to stop me. So, um, I mean, lots of mules coming down back home, but I mean, Protoss already has another base up on you. His DTs are just ravaging. The countryside, once again, Trogdor DTs. Burninating. Indeed, as they are wont to do. Uh, more deaths being shaded in here, and any economic harass is just going to be way too much. Yeah, Beyond is just like uh, a dog in the corner of the, t of the cage, just trying to hold on ferociously, but looking pretty puny while he goes at it. That's his ground force. He's essentially on this one track mind of, well, I get to the mid game and I make Marine Marauder Medivac add in some supporting Widow Mines and Liberators and try to kill you. But this time I think he's a little bit too far behind. But he's trying. I mean, he just had that one Widow Mine. Perhaps he can get his, <laughs> okay. All right, and the game's over. That's Hero saying, okay, get out of my game. GG, and in fact, it is the HH again there from, uh, from beyond. And that's gonna be Hero taking us to the deciding game number five. This is the difference, Brendan, between best of threes and best of fives, where you just see, wait a second, if this had been a longer series in GSL, maybe Hero makes it out instead of Beyond. Yeah. And then maybe Special or Major makes it out instead as the series transpires differently. Who knows? We're now in an alternate reality, Brendan. Yeah, Ooh. it's it's pretty crazy. I, I was expecting the 3-2 out of Hero. I thought this was going to be very close, but I thought Hero would take it this time. He's He's getting close. It's getting very close. I, I saw Bion there actually off camera. It's the secret, uh, you know, caster information. He was actually talking to himself. I saw him cursing a little yeah. bit. He does not look happy, man. He is his None head. of the mothers would be happy, but I, you, you got to feel for him, right? He's not expecting that kind of all-in. It's one of those all-ins that can definitely get you your, your, your anger going as a Terran player. It's a bunch of adepts. With two warp in or warp prisms rather, it's yeah, like double some of the dirtiest prism. like builds coming mm. out of Hero right now. Hero's and is just a little bit uh, irate at himself that he has not been able to hold these off. I mean, these are the kind of Protoss plays that, like Hero's gonna have a hard time going to sleep tonight, guys. Like I know it's like really late. It just hit uh, 1230, 1223 precisely wow. uh, here in Seoul. So. Uh, you know, these have to, this is kind of like running the gauntlet for both of these players. They had to play yeah. at the top of their game in GSL Code S. Insane competition there. Um, and uh, they did very, very well. Very high level of play out of both of these players. And then, like you said, like 10 hours later, they have to go at it again. So uh, a lot on the line here for both of these players. It's very, uh, a very short round robin here in Stage 2 uh, of the SSL Challenge. So right now, Beyond's challenge is Hero. Can he take this last game of the series? It's going to be a close one, coming down to the final game. Down to the wire, down to the rubber match, down to the final game of the series, <laughs> Brendan. Oh my goodness. It's on a knife's edge. What else can we say about this one? Thank you were talking about this going very late. Thankfully, I feel like these two players specifically are two of the most practiced players in Korea right now. And they have some of the most stamina out of anyone, and of course, everybody knows this guy. It's beyond the Blue Terran. With a fresh lip injury, thanks to that second game, or the, uh, <laughs> the fourth one, rather. Here's the Protoss player inflicting that upon him. It is Hero. With the fresh new hairstyle, Indeed. going alfalfa. Mm. There we go. Gotta love it, it's that headset style, man. Beyond okay. mixing it up this time, going gas first on over growth. I was pretty close to saying Overwatch. <laughs> Not the first one to do that, thankfully. That's actually a Brood War map. 
Overwatch? Yeah, it has a giant Overwatch symbol in the middle of the map. I guess that makes sense. Ah. Made by the same company. <laughs> it was a pretty generic map, but I mean, at least the logo in the middle was cool. Uh, all right, so uh, it's very difficult as a Terran player, especially for Bion, uh this late at night, this deep in this series, to try to deal with every possible combination of things that here could be bringing his way. Um, we've seen long macro games, we've seen all ins, and uh, we saw game number one, which was just incredibly scrappy, but tons of Widowmind damage that Hero just could not deal with. So, who gets in whose head here? I don't know. I feel like Bielma's a, a little bit frustrated after that last game, but I think he's a player that can definitely reset himself and get ready for the, the next one and kind of erase what happened in the last game. Hero, I mean, these, these all-ins are definitely working out for him. These kind of wonky plays didn't work out in game three, but game four definitely did. And beyond going into the, the final one here, trying to mix it up even more with the gas first, we'll have the faster factory, maybe just heading back into Widowmine play. I mean, hey, if it works, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't at least try it again. I mean, you can't really expect it to get quite as much damage done, but I mean, maybe we are late enough that this is just going to be no holds barred. Both players just trying to kill each other as fast as they can. So we'll see. Uh, at least we don't have another, you know, 18 gateways being built in the two minute mark. <laughs> That's uh, thankfully always thankfully. The, the difficult spot to find yourself in. Uh, Bian does find one kill with his Reapers, so already a little bit more valuable than most Reapers we get to see. But oh, Brandon. Here comes the overcharge. I feel like, you know, the hero, he's been mixing up his play for every... Uh, this Reaper actually gets another probe kill, which is quite fascinating. Um, but hero's really been playing these builds to the map, and I love that he does this on the map of Overgrowth. He wants to get yeah. over here very, very fast. There's only two Marines out here. He's successfully identified that Beyond is trying to go for a tech build, and he's going to have a lack of units. Even picking off one Marine to go here, that is huge. Uh, if you also are in range of that tech lab, and I, I think this is the spawn location on Overgrowth where you're not in range of the tech or of the uh, reactor, so won't be able to kill that. That would actually be very big, but instead just picking off the supply depots at the front, making it a little bit more difficult. Lots of free damage being done here. Cyclone with a lock on, actually still locked on. Wow, takes all the shields off that mothership core and will at least make it a little bit difficult. Uh, okay, loses vision of the high ground. I was like, why isn't he shooting the uh, cyclone anymore? But. Yeah, Lost Vision is that Mothership Core was pushed away. So a decent defense, uh, 200 minerals worth of value out of that for just the uh, 100 for the pylon. Yeah, definitely a pretty cool way to get a very small advantage early on. Oh, he denies that Reaper from actually seeing the tech on the left side of the map. He's chasing down this Mothership Core that doesn't have enough for a recall. and doesn't have any more overcharges. Beyond is looking to get aggressive here. And Hero actually made a Phoenix. I don't think he went for any Oracle. He doesn't have any units. Uh, he doesn't have anything okay. to hold off this attack. There are two Stalkers being warped in here as well as those Adepts. And okay, this okay. might be enough uh, to All get right. this out of here. He's going to turn around and try to push this back for now. But Hero warping in units in just the nick of time. He's freaking out a little bit there. It's actually maybe Bion is the one that overextended a little bit. He has the second Cyclone coming out. Looks like he might lose that medevac. He does, oh, in fact. And now Hero's on the chase. Yeah, Stalkers do uh, great at what they are named after, stalking their opponents across the map and picking off oh, one boy. Marine at a time. Oh, man, it does not look good for Beyond. He is rallying more troops out there, but that Cyclone is going to do nothing but run, and I almost think it's better to sacrifice that. If you know a unit's going to die, it's better to do some damage instead of zero. Mm -hmm. I, I'm almost like a little bit weirded out by, uh, you know, a lot of times you see Zerg players where all of their hatcheries uh, rally to one point. Um, so all of their units w will be, uh, you know, traveling in one direction, but then maybe they get cut off at one of their hatcheries and their units just run into enemy uh, fire and die. So, I don't know, a lot of times, especially in very low unit situations like this, uh, see, uh, units that are very important like those Cyclones just go down without dealing any damage. Gonna be a big hit to Beyond. Yeah, he tried to put on the pressure and tried to go for a counter attack after the pylon attack of Hero. And also by just zoning out the Mothership Core and realizing that it had no energy. And even I was freaking out there for a bit. But eventually, 
Uh, we were both wrong as Zero was able to hold that off easily and get very far ahead from there. Now going for his own drop. Thankfully, there is a tank in nice position here for Bion to help out the defense. But third base coming down behind all of this, uh, Brendan. Hero realizing he doesn't even have to kill Bion, he just has to wound him. And uh, sometimes that's just enough, and it has been so far. The uh, one game that uh, Hero did wind up taking off of Bion in GSL was thanks to this exact same opener, the uh, Pylon warp in mm -hmm. on the low ground. Coming back in with even more harass. Bion doing his best to defend against this. Still just being ever so slightly effective. Hero taking the tiniest of traits. Picks off one Marine. And the Observer. Okay. Um, well, uh, picked off by Bion. You know, I actually never realized that the uh, the Korean character for Bion in Bion's name is actually more like Bion. Yeah, Bion. Yeah, but the, the ya sound is not possible to create in Korean. So every time I say Bion in like my most American of accents, it's not quite there, close enough. Very close enough. All right, nice missile turret placement. They're uh, pushing back that uh, warp prism. Okay, he's finally he's gets really to trying to one. find an angle. And he picks <laughs> off another Marine. <laughs> what? This, this is the secret to victory. Invest 300 APM <laughs> into killing one Marine at a Marine by Marine, this I'll is, take down this, this Terran. Death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> pretty much. We got a pretty strong attack coming out here from Bion. Uh, this is what he's been doing, kind of hitting at 110 to 130 supply with some tanks, widow mines, liberators. And Hero's actually thinking about putting down a, a Nexus at the gold. Is there too many missile turrets to build in your base? Like, is, that, <laughs> is there a number that is too many? I, I, I feel like... Uh, Every time I see players consistently get harassed over and over and over again, just put one down. All right, finally, the warp prism goes down, but 15 SCVs. Oh, my God. I think there was more damage done in the main, and he finally took it out. Mm -hmm. So, Byun, once again, he's essentially relying on this one push, and it is a strong one. He definitely could end the game with this, but he's gotten slight advantage by slight advantage. He got that third base up very early. We haven't gotten a clear look at exactly what his entire unit composition looks like, but I guarantee it's a lot scarier than Beyond's army right now. All right, here we go, lifting the tanks and shading on in. Here we go, stimming backwards. Beyond trying to get as good a connection on these Widow Mines as possible. Even the Liberator sieged up, but will it be enough? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, Hero even recklessly shading right on top of Widow Mines, but does not get punished for it. He's way too far ahead at this point. It looks like he's in a good position to take game number five and take the series. A big warp and follow up as all the st the Phoenixes rather stalk everything that the turn has left over. And he even takes the gold base. Okay, well, at least one Widow Mine hit will take one stalker out. <laughs> <laughs> Hero saying, get out of my game, dancing more Phoenix than, he, than Bion has Marines. <laughs> and he has units at this point. Bion just, just, I think he's realized it now he's as a sour face comes across his face. Every single Marine, a hero bopping him out of what was an incredibly close series. Um, wow, all I can say is just, I, I am immensely impressed at you know the difference that a best of five affords like a best of three. Earlier on, Bion wins in GSL, but SSL looks like that belongs to Hero. Yeah, this was essentially the top two players here. I guess TY is another one of those of the top three of SSL challenge. Indeed. Uh, going head to head, so a very important match that could decide who takes first place. Funky grenade there, but here is the final attack from Hero coming on in as he looks to take game number five up against his very tough opponent of Bion. Yep, and there it is, GG. Hero will take this series. A look of the utmost relief on his face. And a big smile there as well. Well deserving Hero with a 3 to 2 oh. victory over Bion. You can see the range of emotions. Hero yeah. just immense relief and excitement, whereas Bion. Another really devastating series. That was down to the wire. And every time you see Bion lose these incredibly close series, the 
I, I, the range of emotion on his face is just heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. Uh, to see him come so close and even up 2-1 in the series and then lose the next two games to Hero, like, oh, my God, it just hurts yeah. my soul. And the way that – the manner that he lost mm. those games to, the eight gateway all-in with double warp prism on Frost and then that game where he overextends – and that just one small mistake leads to Hero getting another small advantage and eventually pushing that one out. Uh, well, that does make uh, beyond 1-1 one, one here in our uh, SSL Stage 2. It is a continual round robin, so it's not over just yet. Whereas if Bion had beaten Hero in uh, GSL, and then Hero hadn't made it out if he had lost a major in that last series, uh, then that would have had a much more serious repercussion. So that's going to do it for our second series of the night, guys. Don't go away, though, because when we come back, we'll have T.Y. facing off against Rian. We'll be right back.